Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response to capital projects. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below and go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments is what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another video by Kurzgesagt, which was requested, called The Most Extreme Explosion in the, New in the Universe. I think I have an idea of what this is about, but let's take a look. Supernovae are the most powerful explosions in the universe, unleashing enough energy to outshine galaxies. We have no real metaphor for their power. If the sun were to magically go supernova, it would feel like you were being hit by the energy of a nuclear explosion every second for weeks. While supernovae are the end... The sun is actually too small of a star to go supernova, but if it were to, and if it was such a star that was capable of, it would wipe out the entire solar system and then some. <laughs> Gins of creation, forging the elements that enable life, they also burn sterile whole regions of galaxies. So what would happen if one hit Earth? <laughs> there are, roughly speaking, two ways to make a supernova. Either the core of a massive star implodes, or, less common, a white dwarf gains mass to the point where it ignites explosive nuclear fusion. The outcome is the same, a supernova explosion. When we think of an explosion on Earth, we think of something that happens fast and ends. But a supernova is more like a volcanic eruption followed by a tsunami. At first, there's a colorful ball of hot, expanding gas, creating a spectacular cloud that will shine for about... I have to say, I love the art direction, as always, done by Kurz Gazzard. <laughs> ...at a month, but then it doesn't stop. Hot and dangerous gas rushes outwards at speeds of 10,000 kilometers a second through the near vacuum of space, sweeping up the sparse gas of the galaxy. This wall of gas expands for tens of thousands of years and will eventually span up to dozens of light years until it finally cools off and disperses its substance back into the galaxy. So what if this star tsunami hits us? Well, the damage depends on how far away it is. Stage one, thousands of light years away. Humans have witnessed dozens of supernovae, but all of them were thousands of light years away. I like how it divides up by each time slot and how it showed how long this process really takes to propagate throughout galaxies. It just goes to show you how big galaxies really are and how big these explosions really are. They appeared as new stars, some outshining the moon, twinkling for a few weeks and disappearing. Aside from looking very pretty at this distance, they don't do much to us. Stage two, 300 light years away. Things begin to get a bit icky once a supernova occurs around 300 light years away. We can expect one. To give you a sense of how long 300 light years away, the nearest solar system over is on the order of four light years away. So it's still pretty far away at this point. This close to us every few million years. A single star giving the night sky an eerie glow like twilight. And while this is far enough away and dim enough to not do harm to us, they can affect the Earth. At these distances, it's like being hit by the last weak waves of the star tsunami. Not strong enough to do real damage, but still noticeable. Hmm. In fact, we know that over the past 10 million years, multiple supernovae have struck Earth from these distances because we can find radioactive isotopes of iron deep in the rocks and sediments at the bottom of the ocean. Amazingly, these supernovae around the solar system... One thing to point out is all of the really heavy natural occurring elements come from, come from supernovae. Um, they're the only things hot enough and capable of creating enough pressure to fuse atoms into um, things that are heavier than, say, iron, even stuff like uranium. <laughs> All this stuff has to come from things that are even 
too big and too heavy to get compressed during a star during its normal life cycle. So without supernovas, we wouldn't exist, which is fascinating. Though, as this is sure to point out, you don't want to be too close to them. ...have cleared a 1,000 light year wide pocket of space that's called the local bubble. They blew away the interstellar gas and dust, creating a lumpy wall of gas that's now a cradle for star formation. Stage three, 150 light years away. One thing I want to point out is the uh, intensity of a supernova square is scaled inverse quadratically. So here we're going from 300 to 150 light years away. That means the supernova is going to be four times more intense at this point. Once a supernova happens much closer than 300 light years, we're approaching the zone where it does real damage. Stars have extremely powerful magnetic fields. When they die, the tsunami of dead star actually retains a lot of this magnetic energy woven through the shock wave that expands outwards. In this highly magnetized cloud, we get conditions like in a huge particle accelerator that's accelerating charged particles like protons, nuclei, and electrons to immense speeds which means we have an expanding cloud that is shooting deadly radiation in all directions long after the bright light from the initial explosion has faded away. Note that they're not actually green. <laughs> that's, a, that's another misconception that people get about uh, radiation, but obviously they're just doing it for artistic effect, which, which I love. If a supernova happens too close by, waves of these cosmic rays will wash over the solar system for thousands of years. While we're mostly protected on Earth's surface by the atmosphere and ozone layer, the influx of extra radiation will still increase cancer and mutation rates. Not enough to cause a mass extinction, but it will be noticeable. <laughs> radiation will not cause a snake to grow a second head or a butterfly to what looks like it's growing an extra set of wings. Nah, increased, can increased uh, cancer rates are probably for the most common uh, side effect from radiation at these type of doses that they're talking about right now. Spaceflight would become impossible in the solar system as astronauts wouldn't survive the waves of radiation for long. We don't know exactly how bad this would be, but a supernova that is close enough may trap our species on Earth for generations, maybe thousands of years. It only gets worse from here. Stage four, closer than 100 light years. Within 100 light years, things get bad, as a supernova <laughs> disrupts our climate in ways that we don't fully understand yet. There are a few unpleasant things happening all one after another. First, the high energy photons arrive from the explosion, followed by many decades of radiation from the radioactive tsunami, both of which seriously damage the ozone layer, Earth's shield against harmful radiation. The ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet radiation by breaking up I love their explanation about the ozone layer. This actually wasn't something I initially thought about when I first saw this title, but they've clearly done their, done their research here. It's cool. Part ozone, O3, into O2, and a free oxygen atom, which later reforms back into another ozone molecule. But the supernova radiation breaks up nitrogen molecules that gobble up the free oxygen, breaking the cycle, and depleting the ozone layer quickly. Without a radiation shield, everybody living on the surface is exposed to very high levels of UV radiation from our sun. Cancer rates would skyrocket, and just going outside during the day could be life-threatening. Yep. The extra radiation would also kill a lot, if not most, of the plankton in the oceans that live near the surface and are the basis for the marine food chains, leading to a mass extinction. Worse still, supernova radiation would ionize gas in the atmosphere, which means that it would punch through molecules and knock electrons off nuclei, leaving them charged. These charged nuclei then act as seeds for water vapor to gather and form massive global clouds. In the worst case... Great simple depiction of ionization. ...is they would reflect enough sunlight to trigger an ice age. In fact, it's thought that the ice age two and a half million years ago was caused by a supernova. Some scientists even think that a super... I was not aware of that. Hmm. ...over about 60 light years away might have been the cause of the Devonian mass extinction 350 million years ago. But wait, there's more. The electrons punched free by the radiation form enormous electric avalanches, or in other words, lightning. Earth is hit by some of the worst thunderstorms in millions of years. 
The intense lightning causes global wildfires that consume forests and crops, devastate cities, disrupt our electrical grids and global supply chains. All while a decimated ozone layer leaks deadly radiation. While in the past, the eco- Yeah, things have gotten really bad at this point. Kind of reminds me of that movie Geostorm. <laughs> <laughs> system may have bounced back from a nearby supernova after a few thousand or million years there's no guarantee modern civilization can take a hit of this magnitude we would face food shortages skyrocketing prices and wars as nations struggle to not be consumed by chaos so a supernova this close would at the very least do significant damage for hundreds or thousands of years if not end our modern civilization and with it millions or even billions of lives Still, humanity would likely survive and could recover. Stage 5, closer than 25 light years. A supernova closer than 25 light years means that we're in its kill radius, where a mass extinction is all but ga <laughs> Love that term. <laughs> guaranteed. Probably about half of the ozone layer would be destroyed, and massive climactic disruption on a scale we've never witnessed would ravage Earth. Entire ecosystems would swiftly be wiped out by radiation as global wildfires envelop the planet. All the things described before happen, but way more intensely and much faster. A few people might survive for years in bunkers if they have food supplies, but the world they return to will be devastated and hostile to life for hundreds of thousands of years. Human extinction is extremely likely. The final stage, four light years. Being any closer to a supernova is very unlikely because space is big, but the effect... They pointed out, like I said earlier, Alpha Centauri is the nearest uh, solar system to us. Cool. This would be extreme. Even from four light years away, the distance to Alpha Centauri, a supernova would be almost as bright as the sun in the sky. While casting two shadows could be fun for a few hours, within days the Earth's surface gets as hot as a sauna, baking the surface for weeks until the explosion fades. The surface of Earth burns, scoured of life. Even the oceans aren't safe. The massive amount of radiation that follows burns away the ozone layer, killing everything that sees sunlight. It would be the largest extinction event in history, reducing life to a few survivors in the deep sea and critters in the deep soil. Life basically has to start over. Conclusion. How worried do you need to be? So, should you worry? No. Fortunately, there are only a handful of stars that may explode within 1,000 light years of Earth, and none are close enough to be a serious threat. Even better, these stars will probably not go supernova for many millions of years. So you are safe. <laughs> but there's no guarantee for the far future. As stars orbit the galaxy, our descendants may find themselves dangerously close to a supernova. But by then, a far more advanced and wiser. Oh, that's cool. They're showing a Dyson sphere and what looks to be some massive thing that can just move us, the sun out of the way. That's awesome. Humanity will hopefully be able to just move out of the way. In any case, you can sleep well tonight under the beautiful night sky. And if you dream about understanding... Wow, that was that was a good one. Um, it was different than I thought because I thought they were going to talk about okay, what happens when like the Earth is going to be engulfed by the massive explosion from a supernova if we just happen to be that close for whatever reason. I like their depiction of let's see how how close it needs to be because the explosion's already extreme enough that it would that it would kill everything. How close can we be to it? And it's, of course, it's on the order of many light years um, and still be okay, kind of okay. What's going to kill us quickly? What's going to kill us the slow, painful way? <laughs> they did such a good job with, uh, with this depiction. Um, but again, it's supernovas have actually helped out our civilization more than it hindered it just because it gave us all these... Um, all these heavy um, elements and metals that we use to uh, to fuel our society. Uh, even, like I said, commercial nuclear power wouldn't be possible because we wouldn't get the massive stockpiles of of uh, uranium and other um, heavy earth elements that we would that we need to uh, to run our civilization. 
and yeah you can get a lot you get so much more dose from um supernova gamma ray bursts all kinds of nasty stuff out in space than you would ever get from working in a commercial nuclear power plant <laughs> uh, another good video as always thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time